Com. You'll see I got a guest in the studio with me today, which always makes me happy. I got Mr. Thomas Sanders. He has been dubbed as the next Jerry Lee Lewis at the ripe age of 17 years old. Big shoes to fill, but lots of good things are coming. Uh, in terms of headlines from you and your talent, you're a pianist and an artist and a musician, and welcome. Oh, well, it's great to be here, Miss Rebecca. I'm very honored to be here. Well, I have been hunting you down since our good friend, Trisha Walker, our mutual friend, but then a good friend of good things mentioned your name to me back last November before the 50 Nights of Lights there in Cleveland. You had just graced the stage at the Grammy Museum um, and played, and she said, you need to have Thomas uh, on Good Things. And so it hadn't been a year, so I I did better than that. Um, But you are a busy guy out there with your gigs and things, so congratulations. Oh, I appreciate that. I've been staying very busy, extremely busy. (laughs) Well, there's there's a shoe to fill. I, or I guess a need to fill in terms of different types of artists. So your, I guess, uh, music of choice or your instrument of choice is piano. You don't see many of those. It's usually guitar or whatever. When did you first stumble upon the piano, Thomas? Well, it was I was probably about six or seven years old, maybe younger, maybe a little bit younger. Uh, all I remember is I had a little toy piano when I was probably about that, that age. Um, and I would pick out cartoon songs on on it and uh and I went to church one evening it was christmas time uh uh Kingston Methodist Church my me and my grandparents my cousins all went out there uh and I they had a piano in there and I I kind of walked over to the piano after the services and uh and I picked out Silent Night and I was probably about 6 or 7 years old and uh and then the next year when I turned 8 uh my daddy got me my first piano uh it's an old upright piano and uh the rest is really history. You know, I, I, I kind of picked up a boogie beat. I must have heard it on television or something, one of them cartoons, and I started doing that left hand like Jerry Lee did, and and the rest is history, pretty much. I just kind of caught on after that, and uh, it just took off. So I guess it's that story of Thomas that the piano chose you. Maybe you didn't choose the piano? Yes, ma'am. That's exactly right. When you were five or six and you were listening, or what, which uh, now I'm interested in what cartoons or maybe kids' shows were you watching where the tune, I guess, a uh, piano tune, because Rhino and I have discussed here many a times how classical music or actual instrumentation back in, back in the day, but you're 17 so that couldn't be back in the day of like Wild E. Coyote and some of the other, you know, cartoons. So what were you watching that you heard in your head that you would then turn around and try to play? It might have been Tom and Jerry or something. I love Tom and Jerry and all the older cartoons. It, it might have been one of those. I'm really not for sure exactly what it was. I just remember I started playing it one day, and I must have figured it'd come off of television somewhere uh, or on the radio. It could have been on the radio. I'm, I'm really not for sure, but that's just what I figure. So eight years old, you got a piano first for Christmas. Did you have any formal lessons, Thomas, or did you just sort of figure the machine out yourself? I figured it out myself. I did take lessons because my grandmother wanted me to take lessons, uh, but I was already pretty good when I started taking lessons. And uh, uh, Miss Jenny Chafin at Wilson County Christian Academy, where I go to school at, uh, I took lessons with her, and and, uh, she tried to teach me to read music. I can't read music. Uh, She tried to teach me how to read music, and she would play like Beethoven and Bach and all this classical stuff, and and I never could read the music. I would sit there and watch her fingers and listen to it, and she would kind of show me the way, and I would listen to it and go back and play it. Um, but uh, that's the only really somewhat of lessons that I've had. That's incredible. You know, I connect with that just a little bit. Uh, I took piano as a young girl, but I, I read the. I did the whole formal. Had to be forced to to practice, do my recitals, all of that. But it stemmed from my grandfather played at church, and he couldn't read the music. He played all the hymns um, by ear and then by memory. He never. I want to say excelled. I mean, he was a fine pianist, but he never necessarily excelled. He filled the position that was needed there at the church. Um, but I was always fascinated that. There was this ability to be able to hear and then translate because I was very much more, oh, gosh, no, I got to read and then, you know, follow instructions because that's really what reading music is, is is sort of like following instructions. And for you to have that kind of backwards or I guess different, it's interesting how you – I want to know how your brain works, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't tell you that. I don't know none of that. Uh, I just know I just sat down one day and started playing. <laughs> so what drew you what okay so if if the beethovens and all that that's what you heard in the play when you got excited what, who did you start feeding off of like what artist inspired you as a pianist uh 
Well, for one, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, but I started playing like him somewhat before I knew who he was. Uh, when I picked up that sort of left hand, walking left hand on that on that bass of the piano, uh, I went and played for Mr. Jim Easterlin uh, in Vidalia, Louisiana, at the music store, and I played. Uh, it must have been some kind of boogie beat that I'd come up with, you know, something that sounded good to my ear. Uh, and I played it for him, and he, he looks at me, he goes, you kind of sound like Jerry Lee Lewis there, son. I said, look up at him and said, who's that? I was going to say, who introduced <laughs> you to Jerry Lee Lewis? Because that's not always something that, even though he's a you know phenomenal Mississippian, you know, it's not many that parents just go, hey, you should you should hear this. So that's who introduced you to him. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and then, well, he told me about him the first time, and then about a year or so later, um, we was coming home from Shreveport, and uh, Great Balls of Fire comes on the radio. Uh, and I'm like, who's that? Well, it was Jerry Lee Lewis. And I heard it. I looked it up one time. I listened to it on my phone when we got home. About 6 o'clock the next morning, I was playing Great Balls of Fire. I must have been probably How about. do you do that? <laughs> How do you see what keys to do? I mean, to I, sort I of know. I listened to it. And uh, about five, about 6, 7 o'clock the next morning, I was playing Great Balls of Fire. I must have been probably about 10, something, 10, What's your family old. thinking about this around about this time? Well, I remember when I started playing, my dad over there, he walked in the kitchen about that time, and he looked at me real strange. <laughs> like, is that you, son? Are you playing a recording? He come like... in my room one time, and I was watching the Great Balls of Fire movie, playing along with the, the songs in the movie. And uh, he come in there, and he said, I couldn't tell if that was a movie or you. <laughs> well, you know, that's your parents got lucky because most parents have hard stories of when their kids first bring home instruments. And then it's, you know, like we, we try to really be supportive until they figure out those first notes. And your parents had none of those growing pains <laughs> with you, it seems like, Thomas. You just went straight to, to being sort of good at it. When did you recognize that not everybody could do what you could do with a piano? Because it sounds like... You, it was very, um, uh, in, in, like an instinct for you. Like it was just sort of, you just didn't know that folks couldn't do that. Well, uh, it was probably here recently, uh, about a year or so ago. You know, everybody just kept telling me about because about a year, about a year and a half, almost two years ago now, uh, I started going out playing places, playing gigs and stuff for money. Uh, I didn't realize you can make that much money doing that uh never thought i started playing never thought it would take me anywhere but boy was i wrong absolutely uh, but uh people just kept telling me man you're good you're good you know and i hear the same thing from everybody you're you're something else you've got a talent and uh that's when it kind of hit me you know not everybody can do that no uh, not everybody can do that not even halfway good not even chopsticks. And that's what some I know some people that can't even do that. <laughs> you know, I would it's brush up my skills. I promised Trisha Walker that I'd, I would figure it out the next time I was in Cleveland. We would play a little chopsticks there on the on the streets of Cleveland because they have the piano set up. But um, but no, no, not everybody can just sit down to a piano and and sort of um, and sort of play that way. What was your What was your first gig? What was your first paying, even if it was small, gig where you got to be a pianist for hire? I think it was about two years ago in February, uh, out at the Woodlands event venue, Wedding Barn in Kingston. Uh, it was owned by Mr. Leslie Floyd. Mr. Leslie Floyd just passed away not too long ago. Uh, I went out there, and, and Mr. Donnie McElwain was out there, uh, and he had his he was playing, and uh, he was one of the opening acts. We had an Elvis impersonator come in for Valentine's Day. And, uh, and between his acts, because he did like a young Elvis first, and then he... he took an intermission and then come back as an older Elvis, like from the 70s. Uh, in between his acts, they got me up there, and I played Great Balls of Fire, and uh, I got a standing ovation. Uh, Elvis didn't get, even get a standing ovation that night, which would surprise me. <laughs> you uh, mean the Elvis impersonator there? Elvis okay. impersonator. <laughs> I was like, Elvis got plenty of standing oh, ovations. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But, this, yeah. but uh, they paid me $20. Uh, I played two songs. I played Great Balls of Fire and a whole lot of shaking going on, and I paid me $20. And that's when I kind of realized that, hey, I can go do this for a living, make some money off of it, at least, you know, for right now, until I can get my fan base. Absolutely. You know. You're still 17. <laughs> yeah. And so you said that was about two years ago. Fast forward now, you've been on all kinds of stages, including the Grammy Museum, and you've got more dates coming up. But we've got more with Thomas Sanders, Pianist Sensation, coming up next. 
podcast. We are continuing our conversation with Thomas Sanders. He's 17 years old, but he's been called the next Jerry Lee Lewis. And you don't mind saying that because you have connected to the Lewis family. So how did you get connected with Jerry Lee Lewis's family? Well, it first started out, uh, it was May of last year, uh, this month last year, I believe it was, or it might have been March or April, I can't really remember exactly. Um, my friend, Judge David Bramlett down in Natchez, had knew uh, another good friend of mine, Mr. Tim Vance, and Mr. Tim had known Jerry Lee and family for a good while, and uh, and he heard that I was a super big fan, and uh, and uh, he got Jerry Lee and Miss Judith to put together a package to send to me in the mail that had included a a signed autographed picture said to Thomas Sanders, love Jerry D. Lewis, and uh, his last man standing CD, he signed JLL on the front of it, and he gave me a keychain uh, with his face on it and uh, and uh, a little fridge magnet. You know, he put they put together this this little package sent to him. It was the greatest, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. It was very exciting. And uh, and then after that, just things started getting, growing more and more. And uh, and uh, eventually I got up to the Grammy Museum last uh, this past November and uh, played for his awards, the Crossroads of American Music Awards ceremony, and uh, along with Jacob Tolliver. Uh, and uh, uh, after that, you know, I just started getting more involved with everything. And uh, June the 24th, I'll be in Memphis on Beale Street uh, playing for a fundraiser at his bar uh, for to fundraise his monument to put on his grave because he said, I don't want no headstone on my grave. I want a monument is what he said. Well, and I think that sounds and it lines up very much with Jerry Lee Lewis's personality. Sadly, though, you never met him in person. No, I did not, unfortunately, uh, before he passed. But your but his uh, family has still gifted you with with certain things. You even mentioned today the shirt you're wearing here on Good Things. Is that Jerry Lee Lewis's? Yes, ma'am. This is one that Miss Judith Lewis had sent to me. Uh, uh, she sent me uh, about five or six of them. Uh, uh, one shirt that I have uh, is one that he wore when he met Mick Jagger at Sun Records not too long ago. Uh, uh, but this one's just a regular old dress shirt that he that he might have worn on a, a lazy Sunday maybe. Uh, but I like it. Uh, it fits. All of them fit very well. They fit like a glove. It's like it's meant to be. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of like passing of the torch. And I think, you know, there's a lot of young artists who come along who may uh, find or idolize or sort of mentor from one who paved the way. But piano is just a little bit different because, again, there's just so few that had piano as sort of their instrument instrument of choice. Not that they couldn't, others can't play the piano. It just wasn't their standalone or standout sort of uh, instrument and was able to make a career based off of just like just that. And Jerry Lee Lewis obviously um, did that. And you brought your instrument into the studio today. So I encourage folks to go over to supertalktv.com if you would like to to watch what's about to happen. But of course, you're going to get to hear it wherever uh, you listen to Super Talk. So you are going to play. What are you going to play for us, Thomas? I'm going to play Great Balls of Fire. Do you ever get nervous playing such a iconic or have you now played it so many times that you just feel like it's part of your soul? I never really was nervous about anything, getting up in front of people playing. I mean, I've been doing it my whole life at church and at school and everything. And uh, Did you ever play Great Balls of Fire at church? When nobody was in the sanctuary, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, no, I mean that's uh, I, I, you know what church sometimes needs a uh, needs a little rocking like that. Okay, do you know the backstory behind Great Balls of Fire? What where Jerry Lee was in his career or time to write that? It was around uh, late '57. It's on records and uh, it was written by Otis Blackwell. And Otis Blackwell has written songs for Elvis and and a bunch of other people. And uh, and Jerry got presented this song and he's like, I like this, but. At one point in the recording session, Sam, uh, he started arguing with Sam Phillips, which is the the owner of Sun Records, and uh, and he started uh, had this religious this, this religious argument. You can go on YouTube and find it. Uh, and Jerry said, "This is the devil's music. I don't need to play it." But they eventually ended up cutting it anyway, and it was a big hit. I be, well, you know, that still <laughs> still could be, but it was definitely a big hit and a good choice for him. It's going to be a great choice for you today. So you can walk over to uh, the piano if you would like. So you're about to hear Thomas Sanders, 17 year old from Natchez, Mississippi, playing "Great Balls of Fire" on his keyboard here in the Good Thing Studio. Take it away. Shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much loving drives a man insane. You broke my wheel, what a thrill. Better than this grace is great balls of fire. I left it love because I thought it was funny. You came along and you moved me, honey. I changed my mind, but it's fine. I said the good this grace is great balls of fire. Kiss me, baby. Ooh, feels good. Hold me, baby. 
love you like a lover should. You're fine, so kind. I'm gonna tell this world I can mind, 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 mind. I chew my nails, twiddle my thumb. I'm real nervous, but it sure is fun. Come on, baby, you're driving me crazy. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Like a love is should. You're fine, so kind. I'm gonna tell this world that you're mine, 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 mine. I chip my nails, twiddle my thumbs. I'm real nervous, but the show is fun. Come on, baby, you drive me crazy. The goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Everyone listening to Good Things is clapping. Whether you're in your car, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Or especially if you're watching by TV. Yeah, you are fantastic. Like you've never heard that before. You've got talent. <laughs> uh, what's it feel like every time? Do you get excited to, to play? It just seems like it pours right on out of you. Absolutely. I mean, every time I get the chance. Every, I'll be walking at school and we'll be cleaning up in the gym after certain things we have in there. We have a piano in the corner. Every time I go in there, I have to play it. Every piano I walk past, I have to play it. <laughs> so right now, what are you interested in playing, or what are you learning? When folks show up at your different like events, obviously if they come out in Memphis and they see you at a Jerry Lee Lewis event, it's going to be primarily what you know um, he played. But like when you're playing your other things, what else is on your, I guess, playlist uh, or set list? Johnny Cash. I do a lot of Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, um, a lot of the older stuff, uh, a little bit of Merle Haggard here and there. Um, let's see. Uh, Roy Orbison, uh, all of the old school stuff, and and I've been trying a little bit of Morgan Wallen here recently. Uh, I like Morgan Wallen. He may be a four letter word around here right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? As long as you show up, people will would be excited uh, to hear you play. I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, people, I had somebody asked me one time. I was playing at Locust Alley, is a local bar downtown Natchez, and uh, somebody asked me, "How do you not lose your voice?" I look at him. I said, "Lose my voice." Are you kidding? <laughs> well, I guess it, it, it could happen, but it would be like get cramps in your fingers. Do you ever play until like your fingers get sore or, or hurt or, well, I don't know, you need to take a break? My fingers never get sore. They never, I never have to take a break. I can sit at a piano for 12 hours and, and play throughout 12. You know, it just depends on what kind of day, I, you know, what I'm feeling that day. But uh, I never get cramps in my fingers. They never, they never start hurting. Uh, and it's just. I mean, I don't, I don't even understand how that works, but because uh, everybody else, I don't see how you play that long, play like that for that long, but, uh, but no, they, they never cramp, they never hurt, and I never have to take a break. Have you made a record yet? No, ma'am, I have not. Uh, the only time that I have recorded was with the DMI at Delta State uh, Music Camp uh, this past summer. We recorded Great Balls of Fire, uh, but uh, I don't think it's been officially released. I, me personally, no, I've not recorded a record. I can say, other than Jerry Lee Lewis, right now, is there a pianist who is make? I'm trying to think. Who, there's there's a guy. He's tall. He's got curly hair. He's not country, but I can't think of uh, his name. Um, I think he sings more. Um, opera or classical style music that makes a living as a pianist i you, i can see him but i can't think of his name but is there anyone right now who's out there that you're like that's the career that i would like to have or are you paving your own way thomas i'm gonna pave my own way i'm gonna do like jerry lee did you know kind of go back behind him and try to uh i want to try to I'm, i've been writing my own stuff trying to get my own stuff written uh it's more old country songs than anything uh as a matter of fact i tried to write a rock and roll song uh called rock and roll ruby and later come to find out it was one that jerry Lee lewis recorded i didn't know about and it's almost the exact same lyrics and i didn't even know it that's really um, cool well i think the sky is definitely going to be uh the limit for you thomas is there a is there a song that stumped you that you haven't been able to to nail yet not really. Uh, I can sit down and pretty much listen to anything and play it, but if I don't like it, I'm not going to play it. Oh, I can't there. You, you do have you have boundaries. You have standards. Yes, I like ma'am. that. And you're about to graduate high school, so we're going to learn what Thomas is going to do next. Coming up next, TV.com. I still got Thomas Sanders in the studio with me. He's 17 year old from Natchez, uh, dubbed the next Jerry Lee Lewis. And if you just heard him play, then you definitely know why. But hang tight if you missed it. We may get a little more out of you before the show is over today. Um, but you're 17. You've got like 
like your whole life ahead of you. Obviously, we know what you're called to do, and that's to play the piano of some kind in some way. So what's – you graduate this year, right? You graduate in May. Yes, ma'am, May the 19th. And then where are you headed? I'm headed to Delta State University. I uh, love that. It seems like the best place to go. I, I've been up there for music camp this past summer, and it was great. I loved it. Uh, so that's where I want to go. We'll have to get you connected, too, with Steve Azar, who hosts In a Mississippi Minute here. He's got a lot of workings there at, at DMI. And if it wasn't as the performing, what part of the music business or within that education realm are you most interested in learning about? Probably the business side. I think I need to learn the business side, you know, reading contracts and how to read them just in case somebody wants to try and get some money out of me that they ain't supposed to. Like, you know, what happened with Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis back in the day. Uh, just learn how to read contracts and, and how the music business works on the inside instead of what the people see, you know. Just. Oh, absolutely. I would think it's it's a whole animal from what I hear. Um, for an art, Every artist has a different experience uh, moving through or navigating through that particular business realm. You mentioned that. Did you get a chance to see the Elvis movie? I, did, I have not seen it yet. Everybody at school tells me it's so good, but I haven't seen it. I need to go buy it or something or, or stream it or on Netflix, I don't know what it's on. I don't. I'm not too technological with that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, I think they've got it on DVD, uh, and I might go buy it and watch it. But I've heard it's, I've heard great things about it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, yes, and I will admit I hadn't seen it either. But <laughs> <laughs> the author who wrote the book that inspired the movie was also from Mississippi, so it's just a lot of good connections. And two, just what the story is sort of you mentioned, starting so young trying to learn the business, just trying to you sort of find their way. But you're finding your way to plenty of events. So what all do you have coming up, Thomas? Well, this Saturday, uh, I believe Jimmy Allgood uh, with 107.1 The River in Natchez, uh, they're having some sort of festival this Saturday, I think from 10 to 12 is when I, when he wanted me to play. I've, I've got to call the him. The Heritage out. Fest, or the Heritage Stage in Liberty, Mississippi, okay, I think that, it is. Okay, there's that one. Oh, that's this, that one. Yeah, this is a different wow, one. Wow, you are uh, busy. <laughs> uh, I've got two this weekend. Uh, Jimmy Allgood wants me to do one. i got to call him about that and see uh, if that if we're still on for that. Uh, and then later that afternoon, this Saturday at 3 o'clock, I'll be in Liberty, Mississippi playing at uh, Liberty Heritage Days, which is sort of like an annual thing they do, I guess. Uh, I've never heard of it until before. Uh, somebody had told me about it and wanted me to come do that. Uh, but Lane Hardy's going to be there, uh, and he was on American Idol, not, I think, a couple of years ago. I can't remember when. Uh, he's going to be there. A couple of, of family friends is going to be there, Mr. Larry Dean Dixon. Uh, and they play some music, and uh, I've got one of his CDs. They're great, and I love it. Uh, he's going to be there. Uh, and uh, I'll be there and a couple other people, but it's gonna, we're going to have a great time. Uh, but uh, then after that, you know, I, I'm usually regularly downtown Natchez every weekend, either that or across the river in Vidalia, Louisiana, uh, at one of them restaurants, Crawdaddy's, BB's, just a couple of restaurants right there off the, off the Natchez Bridge in Vidalia. Um, and there's a bar across the river. You know, it, I, I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> Was there area. a way for us to keep up with? with you i have a facebook page it's uh thomas sanders i have two of them. i have my personal page and my music page but it, i mean if you can find it whichever ones some for some reason people have trouble finding it because there's a lot of different thomas sanders out there apparently there is there's another uh, musician not from mississippi uh thomas sanders i think he's a singer he has a youtube channel with three i went searching for you and so i this is why i'm like i am the user that was looking for you um so so yes but you are you're the pianist not uh not the youtube Tuber, that's right. Not yet. That's yeah. right. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, and that's really about the only big platform I use besides uh, – uh, I'm not on YouTube, but uh, I do use YouTube a lot, and I know everybody does nowadays. Uh, but I'm on Facebook mostly is where you'll see all of my events coming up uh, and – uh, stuff like that. That's where I usually add it on Facebook. Well, I knew I wanted to get uh, another song out of you, uh, Thomas. I want to I want to lead you dry. So, what or what are you fisting to play next? I think I'm going to do a whole lot of shaking going on. Is that Jerry Lee Lewis also? That he is. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, listen to me and my music uh, history. You can go ahead and get and get set up. So head on over to supertalktv.com if you would like to see it in action. Again, this is Thomas Sanders of Natchez, Mississippi. He's going to play the piano. Get after it. Shaking going on. Well, I think 
said, come on over, baby, we got chicken in the barn. Woo, honey, now come on over, baby, we got a bull by the horn. I ain't faking, whole lot of shaking going on, let's go. Chicken in the barn, who's born? What born? My barn. Come on, we got a bull by the horn. I ain't faking, but it's a hanging it all night long. Easy now, I said, shake, baby, shake. Ooh. You can shake it one at a time for me. Oh, where the hell the hell's it come over, baby? The whole lot of shaking going on. Easy now, I said, shake, baby, shake. All you gotta do, honey, is just stand it in one spot. And you wiggle it around just a little bit. Now that's when you find I got something, you know. Well, let's go. Shake it, baby, shake it. Shake it, baby, shake it. And shake it, baby, shake it. Shake it, baby, shake it. Come on over. I feel like the crowd's going wild, but it's just a party of me here in the studio by myself to clap for you. But I definitely know you'd get a standing ovation for that, Thomas. And and wow, I mean, it's just it's 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 you are it's like I know you're you, but it, you definitely embody you know. Jerry, I can see now why they say that you are the next Jerry Lee Lewis. But I don't want you know as someone I don't want that to like you know stop you. I want you to be Thomas Sanders. So if you ever break you know through that, you do not have to be a replica. Of Jerry Lee, but it is cool to know that you may take the, up the torch and then continue it in your direction. Because I don't want, you know, I feel like now I'm having a mom moment with you. I'm like, you can be inspired by him and you don't have to fill his shoes. But yes, I mean, because there was, we all saw something special in Jerry Lee Lewis, obviously, and there's definitely something special, I would say, in you as well, uh, Thomas. Oh, well, I appreciate that. If you had your own sort of, I guess, sense of style or um, if you, what you lend to, I know it's the older country or all, but do you have this idea in your head of when you write your own music or when you write your own piano music, like what what that will be like? Yeah, uh, it's, it would be very similar to Jerry Lee's style. That's that's the way I, I learned to play and, and just how I how I play it, uh, just the way I learned how to do it, and that's the way I've been doing it my whole life, pretty much uh, my whole piano musical career. Uh, there's no other way I can really play it. Uh, you know, that's my style. I feel like that style is my style. That's what I feel like. Uh, but I do get sort of a, a an idea when I try to write songs that is uh, similar, but not exactly like Jerry Lee Lewis. But it's very similar. It takes it takes heavily from his style of old older country. Do you hear the? I guess is it the melody or whatever it is in your head first? Like what comes first, the words, and then you try to put the piano to it, or the piano come and then the, you try um, to put words with it? The words come first. I write the words and then I'll take a melody. Sometimes I'll take a mix of say another place, another time, which was a Jerry Lee song back in the '60s, uh, and I'll take a melody, something like that, and I'll take two or three of his other songs and try to put them together for the melody and, and it turns out pretty well sometimes but then other times I'll just have to come up with my own melody and I've done that a couple of times it sounds okay it's they're still working I've got about two or three songs I'm working on but it's very it's a work in progress uh so they're not complete yet but the words come first and then I pick out the melody in my head and uh just sit down and play it sit down and play it and that's all you do do you do you wake up and brush your teeth and play the piano Pretty much, yes. Yes, Dad, I do. Dad's in the studio shaking his head. <laughs> Dad also said he has to come in and say, Thomas, it's time, go to go, it's it's time, time to go, go to, go to bed. bed. Is there anything, are there any other hobbies other than piano running in your head, Thomas? Well, I like older older cars, older trucks and, and tractors and stuff. Uh, he's the one that really, he's the mechanic, my dad is. Uh, but he's trying to been teach me a little bit. I've got a 1957 Ford Fairlane car that I'm working on right now. Uh and uh, but I'm into older stuff like that, and you know, working on stuff and uh, older tractors, cars, and trucks. It's just it's, older stuff sticks out to me for some you reason. You got an old soul in you, Thomas. Even though you're only 17. Well, we're gonna wrap it up here with Thomas.
time. We are filling all the love on the ceasefire text line for Thomas Sanders, who's been joining us today. If by any chance you've missed today, you're just tuning in, shame on you! But you can catch it back uh, in podcast form or on YouTube later on uh, today because you're not going to want to miss the opportunity of learning more about Thomas Sanders. He has been dubbed the next Jerry Lee Lewis, but as his mother mentor, I am saying you can be the next Jerry Lee with a twist of Thomas. So That's be right. your own flavor of Jerry Lee uh, Lewis. Take the path, take the torch, and then run it in your own direction, uh, which you are figuring that out, and you definitely will. And s- everyone's enjoying your playing for us. You've played Great Balls of Fire, and then you played, what'd you play for us? A whole lot of shaking. A whole lot of shaking, and we're going to switch gears, and so we're gonna you're going to take us to church. So uh-huh. you grew up in the church, and you grew up playing there. What hymn are you going to play for us? I'm going to do the old Ruggie Cross. My favorite. One so if I favorites. cry, you come back to the chair, and I'm in tears. Just know that that, that is definitely my favorite. You can go ahead and go to the go to the piano so again you're listening to thomas sanders piano prodigy sensation from natchez he's going to play us old rugged cross on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame I love that old cross where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross. trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown My new favorite rendition of Old Rugged Cross. And you're right, Thomas, you do put your own little Jerry Lee kind of like spin to it, but it's Thomas's rendition of Old Rugged Cross. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to talk to Trish and be like, he needs to do a hymnal album first. Yes. I think that's what we need to do. With I'm planning out your career. <laughs> no, because I'd buy it in a heartbeat and sort of uh, listen to it uh, that way. But, I mean, um, yeah, so talented. So, so talented. Talented for for you, um, it, folks are obviously listening and they're interested and they want to help support you. We don't have anything to buy yet. We don't have an album or anything like that. Um, but if they wanted to book you or get you at their event or sort of find ways to help you out in that way, how do they do that? Well, I've got a Facebook page. You can go on there and you can message me on Facebook or uh, uh, I don't have any business cards or anything. I haven't gotten any made. Uh, that's really the only thing I'm on Facebook. Uh, I don't think you need business cards no, these days. I think no. you're going to do fine sort of through that. And if anyone wants to get in touch with you, they can also email me, Rebecca at supertalk.fm. I'll make sure they get connected with you. But I also hope, though, selfishly, you get a little bit of fun there as being a college student on campus. I mean, again, the mom's coming out of me. You're 17. <laughs> course we know we want you to take over the world and take mississippi with you but i want you to experience uh, life on campus and being a fighting okra and have that kind of uh, fun time as well the rest of your life is is waiting enjoy being a college student um also uh there are you excited about moving to cleveland uh i am it's, it's going to be an experience for me <laughs> i think yes and probably for your family oh, but yeah. also they've got all those pianos throughout the the town so i feel like there's going to be pop-up concerts oh, yeah. uh for you throughout the whenever you stop and sort of sort of buy one um in that way but um but yeah i mean and still with your old cars and everything else Thomas, I mean, what what else makes Thomas tick? Well, that's about it. Music and old cars. Music and old cars. Who are you listening to right now? Uh, I'm listening to a lot of uh, Morgan Wallen and and uh, 
Johnny Cash and and uh, just things of that sort, just older stuff. Uh, um, that's about it. That's all I can think of. Well, you are welcome back anytime you come through the area. And I'm going to go and say it. When you get your first album, Good Things <laughs> is first on your list. Yes, I am. For Media true. Stops. You got it? All right. We're going to be keeping up with you, Mr. Thomas. All right. Well, it was a great pleasure to be here. I really appreciate you having me on. Well, I've enjoyed every minute of it. But you guys stick with us. we got more for you coming up next. you got the boys with Sports Talk from 3 to 6. Rhino and I will meet you back here tomorrow at 2. But until then, I hope you all find time for the good things.